Well, hello there, AI Only Series. It has been a long time, hasn't it? Hey guys, it's Brian with you from the Game Coming, and we are finally doing a AI Only Series in Civilization VI Gathering Storm. This is one of our favorite things we like to do on the channel, but I've not been able to do it since Gathering Storm came out because the mod we had been using for so long, uh, and that worked so well for us in previous versions of, of Civ VI, just does not work with Gathering Storm, and it doesn't look like uh, the mod makers ever going to be able to do it. So if you've never seen an AI only series, essentially what we do is we pit a bunch of AI against each other and we uh, uh, just see who comes out on top. So this particular series, we're going to be pitting all of the new Gathering Storm sieves against each other to see who is the best Gathering Storm sieve. Now we have had the AI, uh, the autoplane mod working. This one's been working pretty much since almost day one with Gathering Storm. But I've been hesitant to use it because if you're unaware of how this mod works, essentially, uh, basically the AI just takes over and plays whatever sieve you're playing as. So if we were playing as Poundmaker, the AI would just be controlling Poundmaker. The downside is if we're playing on Deity, uh, the AI and all the AI that we're playing against are all going to have the uh, extra two settlers. They're going to get the additional bonuses to science and production and money. And so eventually they're just going to completely out tech the AI that's playing as us and so what's eventually gonna happen is Poundmaker is gonna get knocked out of the game because there's just no way the AI can keep up with itself because um, it's the same AI controlling all of it except this one just doesn't get as many bonuses so what inevitably happens with that other mod is eventually he gets eliminated and then we just don't know what's gonna end up happening because we can't stop the autoplay mod so we can't see who even's gonna end up winning the game so what we ended up having to do there for a while is we had to just play it on Prince, which the AI is just not nearly as good, and we just had to hope that we didn't get knocked out, and every once in a while we got knocked out, and then there were complaints about, you know, well, do we continue on with that game? Do we have to restart? And so, essentially, I think a couple weeks ago, someone in Discord told me about a different mod called Cheat Switch Civilization. And so this one essentially works almost the same way as the autoplay. The biggest thing about it, though, is we can actually switch between different civilizations. So, for example, in our previous uh, example, we could switch from Poundmaker to Dido. So, theoretically, then, when Poundmaker gets knocked out, we can still stop, we can still look at the score, and we can still see what uh, who is going to end up winning the game. Now, the only downside is we still have Poundmaker on the map, so that means his cities will be absorbed eventually by the AI, so you could say that they get an advantage, whoever spawns next to us, but, I mean, there's just nothing I can do about it. The great thing with the Better Balanced Spectator is the Civ you were playing as literally didn't exist in the game. Uh, they were in the game, they had, like, a trade deal, I think, with every Civ, but they didn't have a city anywhere on the map, which was just so nice, so you didn't impact the game at all. Unfortunately, we just can't roll with it because it just doesn't work so um i am looking to you guys if you guys know of a better ai only mod please please let me know as for future plans, we are going to be doing some AI-only series. We're going to start off with a Gathering Storm one. So essentially, we have all of these civs here in uh, Gathering Storm pitted against each other. We're playing with Eleanor from England, I think, right? Yeah, we're doing that England Eleanor. We could do the France Eleanor, but I think I'd rather do the England Eleanor because she's a little more updated because they just switched how England worked completely, where France is still pretty much the exact same. So um, we are playing as Norway, the Norway News Network. We're going to keep an eye on it, but eventually, like I said, he's just going to get completely knocked out. We're playing on the brand new Seven Seas map, uh, standard map size, deity, uh, disaster intensity. Clearly, we're going to go with four. Uh, and we're doing 375 max turns, and we're going to leave all of the victory conditions on for this particular one. In the future, we might turn off everything except domination and score just to let the, uh, make the AI a little more aggressive. But for now, this will be, I think, our best option. I guess let's go ahead and start game and just let it load up and we can talk about it. Uh, so, the nice thing about this is they have now balanced the game a couple times since Gathering Storm came out. So, we don't have a super powerful Hungary uh, absolutely wiping everyone out. Although, the AI was never all that great with Hungary. Um, but, Hungary is a little nerfed. 
Eventually, like I said, we will get knocked out, um, but it's okay because we'll be able to switch to uh, a, a different sieve. Uh, so hopefully that shouldn't uh, crash the game or anything like that. Now, a couple things to note. I do want to do another AI championship series. Uh, this is one that we have now done twice. And essentially what we do is we pit every single sieve in the game against each other, basically World Cup style. Uh, so essentially what I ended up doing for the last championship series is I grouped everyone up, or rather I ranked every single sieve from 1 to 36, because this was pre-gathering storm, and then uh, I basically grouped them up based on their rankings, and then we did kind of a World Cup style where we did these different group stages, then teams advanced from their group, then we did a second chance one where every other sieve that didn't make it uh, through the group stages got one more chance to make it into the finals, then we did like a reverse final stage where essentially uh, we elim eliminated like the bottom two after every round and then I think we got to the final six and then we ended up doing the championship game from that I actually don't remember who won I got to go back and actually I was thinking about that earlier I remember Brazil won our first ever championship series and I'm trying to think who won the second one Russia didn't win I remember that I think it was someone who I had pretty highly ranked I mean I got to go look that up but uh, we will eventually be doing that, but we're not going to do that quite yet. Uh, I think I want to do this one first just to kind of make sure everything's working well and kind of get feedback from you guys to see whether there's any better mod. And then I think after this, because I'm currently out of the country, uh, probably as soon as this video goes out, so probably going to end up being uh, a couple weeks before we get into the championship series. Most likely, I think I'm going to end up having to do one other series, and I kind of have a good idea for what we're going to do uh, out of this. And and then after that, we'll probably end up doing the ranking show because uh, I want to do another ranking show podcast type thing. And then we'll end up doing the championship series as is. So now this is the interesting part. We want to reveal the entire map because as you can see, we don't have the map revealed. But I got to actually advance the timer a little bit before we do that. Otherwise, you can actually bug out. Um, you can actually bug it out and then the autoplay won't work. So now that it's running, we should be good to go. Unit needs orders. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. It stopped working. It stopped working. Intern and switch. Let's get the autoplay active. It's a little finicky. So reveal all, and then we should be able to reveal the whole map. And the autoplay is still working, so we should be good there. So as you can see, we could switch to a different sieve here at any point, and we probably will at another point, but um, I'm just gonna let it play until the end of the 10 turns, which should be like 13 or something like that. And then once it stops, we'll kind of grow. Um, um, look at the map. So I love seven Cs. I think this is a slightly better version of Pangea. I think we're gonna get a lot more um, aggressiveness out of the AI. Unfortunately, England is down there and Dido's over here. Dido's in a really awkward spot, actually, all things considered. But then again, she's got that coastal bonus. So this actually works really well for her because she's got a lot of the, uh, she won't have any loyalty issues anywhere on here. Is this all the same continent? Continent, continent, continent. Yeah, that's all the same continent. Remind me, her bonus was the same continent, or what is it? Can move the original capital. Uh, begins the game with the writing. Capitals, all coastal cities on the same continent are 100% loyal. So as long as she puts any city on any of this continent here, she's going to have zero loyalty as long as it's on the coast. So she could literally go put a city over here and have 100% loyalty, which is crazy good. So that is where Dido's at. Over here we got the Inca. Inca doesn't have as many... Um, uh, as many mountains. He actually didn't start near the mountains at all, ironically enough. We'll have to see how this ends up working with Sweden, because Sweden ended up spawning near the mountains, so there might be some loyalty issues. We could switch over to him and see what the loyalty looks like, um, and we might end up doing that. Molly's up here right next to the huge desert. Um, Sweden's kind of in an awkward spot, because they're between both of the major AI over there. Canada started with just a little bit of tundra, just a little bit of tundra, which is honestly probably the best start you could hope for for Canada. Just get a, just a little bit of tundra also they got a lot of city states near them uh, matthias is sitting here with a bunch of city states and remember ai is mostly going to end up conquering most of these city states now ottomans i think if i had to pick any two civs to keep an eye on right now it's going to be between the ottomans and uh the amari uh, uh so they are probably the most powerful uh uh, uh gathering storm civs right now so uh ottomans are there where the mari start because they should have started in the ocean. I don't think they landed. Oh, they landed over there. Ugh. All right, so this is going to be a little awkward. But then again, they are settling over here as well. 
Unfortunately for them, they have Dido right next to them too. And Dido kind of counteracts them because they're not going to have to ever worry about loyalty or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I guess Mari going to end up eating up a lot of this. But yeah, Mari might have had a really bad start here. So we'll have to keep an eye on whether or not they can pull it back. So we wanted to switch to the Inca. Inca would be Pachacuti. So yeah, let's switch over to them and let's go ahead and do 10 turns. And I will leave you on background. I don't think I, if I get rid of that, does that get rid of the autoplay? It doesn't. Okay. So essentially, I wanted to pop over. No, it does get rid of the autoplay. So you have to leave it pulled up. Okay. So we should now be Pachacuti. We should now be Pachacuti. No, it didn't work. It didn't work. All right. Let's try this one more time. And let's leave it pulled up this time. Okay. So we did switch over to Pachacuti. But the thing is, uh, we don't have the reveal all going. So we're going to have to reveal all as Pachacuti. Oh, that is the other bonus. Is Norway gets all these ridiculous bonuses. So we don't actually want to reveal all as another Civ. Because if I end up doing that, what's going to happen is then they're going to get a bunch of, um, well, they'll get a bunch of error score for meeting all the other civs. And I don't think I want to have that happen yet. So technically, I guess we still are Norway. I wonder what's going to happen when we get eliminated. I'm hoping we can still look at the score and stuff. See, I can't pull up any of the scores while the autoplay is playing. Hmm. Hopefully this works. Our other option, and I tried making it work, was we have the ability... Okay, no, no, we actually did switch to Pachacuti. Uh, I'm going to say yes, because I think the AI mostly always accepts it. I mean, we were friendly, so that's probably okay. All right. So I wanted to look at Settler, and he actually doesn't have any loyalty issues over here, so he is going to be able to settle up on these mountains, so that's good. So we are playing now as Pachacuti. That's good, that's good, that's good. So let's switch back to Norway, um, because here's the thing. I want to be able to view everyone, and hopefully by the time Norway gets eliminated... We should then, uh, at least there should be some Civ in the game that has met mostly everyone, so we should be okay. All right, so it looks like uh, Hungary and Ottomans are going to be right on each other's butts right away. And we might actually end up with a war going on here. So, the gossip, I'm not really seeing any gossip, so I don't know if there's any gossip. But yeah, no, Norway is definitely right now at war with Hungary, so this is interesting. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Uh, what's everyone's military? This is kind of in the way. It's kind of in the way. Maybe I should turn this off because I can't really see this stuff here. Who's currently winning in tech? Uh, right now, it's pretty even across the board. Actually, Elnor has the most tech right now. So, All right, you're healing up. I can't actually tell whether or not you guys are at war. Can I click on you guys? Um, No. Now, now it doesn't look like they're actually at war. We might just have to click through everyone and just see how they are. Um, yeah, see how everyone is um, doing with each other right now. I don't have any other mods on, like CQUI. I don't know if CQUI is working right now, so... All right, so Pachacuti, sorry, uh, Mari ended up settling over there, which is really interesting. So they basically just kind of passed all the way through there. Uh, if they can get a couple other cities out here, they're going to be okay, especially since they have Norway right there. Um, but man, that's kind of awkward. That is a little bit on the awkward side. So I wanted to see, hi, Mari. No, 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 no. Who are we looking for? Ottomans. Yo, are you at war? Yeah, you're currently at war with the Hungary. So anyone else at war right now? You don't like the Mari, um, and that's about it. So it's just those two at war with each other. Okay, okay, so we should probably then keep an eye out uh, for these two guys then. We'll keep an eye. Early aggression. Obviously, Ottomans are going to be better long term, especially as they pop out the Janissaries. This early in the game, if he could suzerain some city-states, but I just don't see the AI uh, hungry being able to get it suzerain uh, this early. How's their military strength combined? Right now, you're at 187, 170, you're at 148, so Ottomans have a slight advantage right now. I don't think either of them have enough troops to actually take a city, but we have been wrong before. But man, if they could get an early suzerain, oof, they could do some pretty crazy good stuff. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Ottomans have the river right now, um, so that is good for them. If they can keep holding the river, uh, uh, Hungary's going to have a hard time crossing and taking them. Yeah, see, uh, eh, see, they lost the river, but right now all they have are the, the slingers across it. Both of them are basically just completely eliminating the, each other's armies right now, which is uh, would be really good for another AI, it, like maybe the Mali, Mali, if they could come in and do some attacks. But I think this is going to end up uh, probably piecing out for um, nothing because it looks like Hungary is probably going to end up losing the remainder of their troops here. And then same thing with the Ottomans. They're not going to be able to take a city before they end up losing all their troops. So it'll probably end up as a white piece. 
without anyone being able to take anything and then it just basically sets them both behind so if you've never seen any of these ai only series what usually ends up happening is you don't want to be the sieve that really declares war you want to be the sieve that kind of jumps on the other ai that declared war on each other and basically kind of eliminated each other's armies so like right now Pachacuti is looking really strong with that 250 you know and then mario with 230 and then dido with 260 like that's kind of where you want to be uh, he's looking better and better. I don't think he's gonna be able to take this city though. Really, all you have to do is put your spearman in there and then that would be okay. Um, let's take a quick look at everyone else. See if anyone else is at war right now. Uh, I was looking at the wrong thing, but no, it doesn't look like anyone else is at war right now. Uh, if we went here and we looked at the quick early score, right now Sweden is currently in first place for science. They are also first place in culture per turn. How close are those, by the way? Sweden, 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 Sweden. Uh, my gosh, I don't recognize these people yet. 24, there you are. So she's doing pretty good. She's a little bit ahead of Matthias. Then she's at 19. It's still pretty close. Ottomans are actually have a little bit more on the culture game. Uh, uh, sorry, domination's not gonna really be much and it's too early for diplomatic or religion. Who actually got the religions? Can we see who got the religions yet? No one has a religion yet? I guess no one got a religion yet. Turn 44? I guess it makes sense. I guess it makes sense. Any wonders popping out? Could we search for wonders? Does this work? Wonder. Did anyone get any wonders popped out yet? 11 results. Oh, these are natural wonders. Oh, all right. The motto. I don't think I've ever seen you yet. No, I haven't seen you in Gathering Storm. All right, so the Great Bath got built by uh, England, by uh, um, Eleanor. Uh, Stonehenge got built by the Incas. So then, do you have a religion? No. You're a great Baptist, or you're a great prophet sitting there right now. So he will have one of the religions. There's a natural wonder there. The Hanging Gardens got built by Sweden. Okay. Kilimanjaro's over there for Mari. That's pretty nice. Um, that's another map. The chocolate... Is that the chocolate one? Which one is this? Oh, no, no, no. That's not the chocolate one. Huh. Okay. The Chocolate Hills I like. It's pretty cool. All right, so that's all the wonders then right now. Let's go ahead and just continue on. Uh, we'll just keep ending turn and we'll just keep an eye out. Right now, basically, I just, I'm trying not to scroll around too much because I'm trying to make sure we don't bust the game or bust any of the, you know, the mod or anything like that, but I want to keep an eye on this war. It looks like they probably pieced each other out as we kind of predicted. They got a little lower than I expected, but they should be um, able to survive. Oh no, they're actually turning the tables now, but your uh, warriors are a little too low on HP and there's no farms to pillage, but they did pillage for some faith. Yeah, they did pillage for some faith. Are the Ottomans gonna bring some troops back? Now, here's the other thing. They start popping out some uh, uh, heavy carts or heavy chariots, so they might actually be able to take it if they get their heavy chariots in. But um, uh, Ottomans have some spearmen to uh, fight back. I wonder how the suzerain was looking for anyone. Gosh, so close, man. If they just would have sent their heavy chariots, they could have potentially grabbed it. Oh, so close, so close, so close. Now, with the heavy chariot there, they should be uh, 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 safe. Now, how's Molly? Molly's looking at, uh, they're looking pretty good up here with four cities. Um, not as many desert tiles as they would like, though. Sweden's rolling around with four cities. Pachacuti's at five right now. Uh, Dido is at one, two, three, four cities. Uh, the Molly are at one, ooh, gosh, game jumped. One, two, three, four. Um, but their cities are all over the place right now. England slash uh, Eleanor is at five. I wonder, she was taking some damage. It had to be from barbarians because I don't think she was at war with anyone. And then, yeah, like I said, Pachakiri was at five. Uh, what was Ottomans? Ottomans was at five. And Ottomans is kind of trapped here. This is the interesting thing is Ottomans are actually very trapped here. So Hungary is in a slightly better, uh, more advantageous spot, especially if they end up uh, conquering a cod or at least Suzer in them. But they have all this room over here to grow. Uh, it'll really come down to whether Mali ends up expanding westward or eastward. Because if Mali expands eastward, we're probably going to end up seeing a war between these two. Kilimanjaro is one of the better wonders in the game because you're going to get some crazy yields because um, it's going to keep exploding over here. Uh, Walata, though, unfortunately, because we have it on uh, four for the disasters, we're going to end up probably seeing some population burn there uh have we had any events yet we've had a lot of events oh my gosh wow so mount hudson mount hudson had a freaking eight tile explosion 
eight fertilized tiles, man. And then the Aris River flooded seven tiles or fertilized seven tiles. And then the Gambia River, eight tiles. Dang. It kind of is unfortunate with the autoplay. We don't really see what's going on, but can I search for Hudson? Hudson. Can I actually search for the mountains? I can right there. Okay, so that one ended up fertilizing all eight tiles. Well, it fertilized the tiles eight times. Now, unfortunately, putting your city right there means it's going to get pillaged quite a bit. They are building up some walls. Yeah, they're building walls in every one of these cities because of the early war. Um, they are actually going to finish them here in the next few turns. We could switch to them and see how close they are to finishing. But like I said, I don't think I want to do that yet. Um, anyone else at war? Everything looks fine. Everyone's actually pretty friendly with each other. Yeah, everyone's pretty friendly with each other. We're going to have to see if that continues on. I'm not a huge fan of, of the friendliness. I could do more than 10 turns at a time. But I think right now 10 turns is probably pretty good. Now, most of these episodes, we're going to try keeping a little on the shorter side so I can get uh, through all of them because I'm trying to hu do a huge backlog before I leave the country. So I'm just trying to keep them a little shorter so I can have enough uh, episodes per day. But probably going to keep them around 25 minutes. This one we might go a little bit longer. Uh, just depending, just depending, uh, because this was the first episode. So Hungary's definitely starting to pull it back, and it looks like Hungary might be able to take a city. If Hungary takes a city, that's the thing. So anytime we've seen an AI take a city early game, it basically kind of like sets them for the rest of the game. It just kind of gives them um, that little bit of momentum, which just really helps them um, go long term. So if they're able to take uh, Edirine, I think that's how you pronounce it, then, and keep in mind, I'm going to butcher all these city names. That's um, may help them here long term. Like they probably will be set up for the rest of the game. Now, unfortunately, this war card. Uh, no, actually, never mind. That wasn't a river crossing. Ah, oh, if he would have pillaged the farm, he could have gotten full HP. No, Ottomans are gonna survive. Ottomans are gonna survive this. Now, Hungary's at one, two, three, four, five cities. Yeah, now there's popping out cities at this point yet. So. He should be able to survive because he's going to end up doing a lot of damage right there. He actually retreated right away. Yeah, he retreated right away. All right, so Ottomans are going to hold on to the city by um, by the skin of their teeth. We got walls now popping out in all of the Hungary cities. Mali are popping out some cities. They got one of the great profits as well. Uh, Switzerland's looking pretty dang good here. Now, long term, Switzerland's in a bit of an awkward spot because where are they going to expand to? They can expand down this direction, but they're going to have two aggressive sieves over in that way. If they go down this way, they're going to have Canada potentially boxing them out. It looks like Inca are trying to box them out as well, but Inca has got a lot of room to the west. Although Norway... All right, Norway's got two cities popping out over here. What are you doing, Norway, buddy? What are you doing, Norway, buddy? I'm not quite sure what you're thinking. I'm not quite sure what you're thinking. All right, so yeah, we're definitely not going to be long for the world here. <laughs> we're definitely not going to be long for the world here. Oh, crap. Crap, crap, crap. So, and a lot of people actually hate us, too. That's great. That's just great. That's just great. And I don't know what the AI decided to do, but they decided to put their cities in spots that are just going to end up um, um, losing them pretty much early on because of, of loyalty issues. Um, Pachacuti, I'm not quite sure what you're doing. It's actually kind of hard to determine what you're doing because your cities are all over the place, but it looks like you're going to probably be able to end up taking our capital. We actually got one of the religions, which is kind of crazy to me. Yeah, that kind of blows my mind here. So all the religions will have been founded. England got one, Incas got one, Hungary got one. Then we saw we had one, which is four, and then Pachacuti had number five, right? Right? Uh, where am I looking? Religion, Brian. Was that one of the... Oh, you know, Inca. Yeah, that was Inca. So who was the fifth one? Oh, Hungary. Yeah, Hungary had one. Wait, did I list off Hungary? Oh my gosh. Uh, England, Inca, Hungary. So then who was the other one? So there's two great prophets left. Great prophet. Let's see who the other two great prophets are. I love the search function. This is the greatest thing they've added to the Civ game. So we had one... Ah, uh, okay, Molly had the other. Yeah, that's right, I remember now. So, if I had to make some early predictions, who do I think is in the best spot? Honestly, I think Molly. Molly has a lot of room to grow. I think Hungary also is in a pretty good spot, but Hungary, having lost a lot of their early troops, might be in a little bit of a sketchy spot. What's their income? Right now, Molly's actually not making nearly as much money as the Hungary, which is a little surprising to me. Um, 
Um, military power, though, is terrible. Somali might end up going to uh, 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 declaring war here on Hungary. That ends up happening a lot. And then with their city getting constantly uh, pillaged here by uh, the volcanoes, that might not go well for them. But the Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu is going to be nice if they can uh, put that up. So we'll see. If I had to predict anyone, I would say Mali at this point. Um, Canada, if they don't get trapped, they have a lot of room to grow. Uh, England also has a lot of room to grow, specifically in the get up there and eat us. Um, and then, obviously, uh, Dido is looking pretty good, too, just because they have so much loyalty. Like, they're going to have zero loyalty issues on any of these cities, which is great. So, let's probably do another 10 turns, and we'll see where we're at. And then we'll probably end up wrapping up this episode. So, uh, they were still at war with each other, but I'd imagine we're going to see a peace before too long. Now, we're not getting any gossip, which is a little unfortunate. Um, we're not getting any gossip because we actually don't have any, um, probably any envoys with any of them. So that's partly why we're not getting any gossip, which is a little unfortunate. But that was the only problem with the Better Balanced Spectator mod is you got a lot of freaking gossip. <laughs> and it got a little annoying there, so... Yeah, these guys are just doing the Eternal War right now, man. They are doing the Eternal War. We should also look at the city-states and see uh, if any of these city-states have been um, suzerained. But as of now, it looks like, yeah, this war is coming to um, basically a close. Now, I wonder who's going to end up settling the desert. Because there's a potentially really good Petra city in here for whoever goes for it. But most likely, we're going to see, like, a Petra city here with Sigu. Uh, with the whole, like, three tiles. Which, you know, that's usually what ends up happening with the AI here. We do have yields on, right? Yeah. It's just, I don't know, some of these don't have yields. And it's just kind of throwing me. But I guess it's the desert tiles. Yeah, I guess it's just the desert tiles. I've just not seen yields every once in a while, and it's kind of, I'm um, just breaking my brain a little bit. So Dido ended up putting a city. Was this, can we look at these while this is going on? No, we can't. I think this is the same continent. You're not having loyalty issues, so that is pretty hilarious, because that is going to probably end up uh, causing a war here before too long. Dido's pretty, girly, uh, pretty good early on with the Byrams. They're so freaking strong if they actually use them. Like, I mean, they could go uh, easily take uh, the, the Mali's capital here. The Maori's capital if they wanted, but it doesn't look like they are interested in a war. Is anyone... So you don't like Switzerland right now, or rather Switzerland doesn't like you. Let's see if anyone... Yeah, she actually doesn't like Switzerland either. She really is not friendly with a lot of people, but really we still only have the war... Oh no! Oh no, we have another war. Pachacuti and the Incas. Pachacuti and the Incas are now at war as well. Or sorry, Sweden and Pachacuti are now at war, which is probably always going to happen. Sweden's rolling around with swordsmen and horsemen. Um, Pachacuti does not have either, so um, this is definitely going to be advantage Switzerland early on. Uh, Switzerland, Switzerland, 380. Pachacuti is rolling around with 353, so um, you just have a lot of warriors right now. So we'll have to see how that ends up working out. Uh, Sweden still had the science advantage. Yeah, Sweden's got a huge science advantage. They're pretty much doubled up on everyone else's science. What about culture? No one's really making any inroads on culture. Faith per turn. Oh, no, that's total faith balance. Yeah, I wish it was faith per turn. That would be a little bit easier to see. But uh, we could pop over here. Um, diplomatic, everything looks pretty much the same. If we went to religion, yeah, it's not going to tell us the faith balance. Generally, uh, we've only seen, I think, the AI win a faith victory like one time. So that is pretty unlikely to see. Um we got to be careful that we don't screw up our Hall of Fame here by always getting a bunch of victories that we don't want. So we got to maybe switch off whoever's going to win here in the future episodes so we don't uh, fill up our Hall of Fame accidentally. But anyways, we're going to wrap up this first episode here. So hope you guys enjoyed it. We're off to a great start here. Glad to be back with some AI only series. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, comment, let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button, join the game, comment, and share your support. We will see the next couple episodes who's going to end up winning this Gathering Storm series. Until then, bye everybody.